righty, good morning and happy holidays. We are up very early today because I wanted to finish the Night of the Zealot campaign for Arkham Horror before I kind of took a break for a week. And so next week I will be off. Um, I won't be streaming, but we're going to get through this tonight or not tonight. I'm always streaming the night this morning. You can already tell it's early and we're going to have some fun. And so this is the Gidzo tool course or base box run through the night of the zealot campaign and if you haven't seen the first couple um you can check out my youtube which has all of the past broadcast and so you can go back and see exactly what i was doing there i do want to point out one thing is that on my last stream i did make a mistake where the the doom or the agenda does not advance and until you check if the agenda advances. And so um, I checked, it didn't advance. Then I added a cultist, which brought me up to the threshold. And I advanced at that point. Uh, you do not advance until you have, sorry, until you have, um, you, until you make that check. And so there's a way to maybe kill the cultist to get the doom off of the board so you, that you don't lose immediately. And so, but it is what it is, learning experiences. Um, so Skids is a rogue survivor, and I was given the uh, suggestion in um, at my last video that I probably needed to add some damage to the deck. And so I had three uh, experience points, or victory points, um, to, to spend some money on, and I wanted to run through what I did. So I took out the elusive, and so elusive is disengaging from each enemy engaged with you and move to a reveal location with no enemies. And so I think that that's a really good card. However, I wanted to put something in there um, that wasn't necessarily disengaging. I think that if I needed to disengage, I could. And I'm taking this out because if I need to kill things, I don't necessarily want to be evading them i'm going to be using like backstab or something for that so coming in for that is a new ally so beat cop so beat cop is you get plus one attack and so um that brings skids up to four or physical i put my cheat sheet right here so i know what it is uh combat and then also you has a free action can exhaust beat cop and deal one damage um, to it and then one damage to an enemy at your location and so it's a free ping damage and so that i think that's pretty good um mainly i want to make sure that i am um able to deal the damage good morning trapid how you doing <laughs> it's uh it's early cheers this is an energy drink not a not beer um <laughs> It's starry, an early start, but Cthulhu never sleeps. That's fair. That's fair. We <laughs> Hopefully we can take him down tonight. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm removing a flashlight to put in an extra ammunition. So this is place three ammo counters on a firearm asset controlled at an investigator at my location. So that would be me. And this just helps me once I get one of my um, weapons out there, then I can probably keep it, keep it out there. And so um i took out the flashlight one i have another flashlight in there and also it's a hand slot and so if i'm going to be keeping my weapons out there a little bit longer then i probably want to make sure that i don't need my hand slots as much so again working with a fairly limited set of cards it's just the core set but those are the changes to my deck hopefully it's enough to take on these cultists all righty so any suggestions for me without spoiling anything? Anything that I need to make sure that I'm doing? I think it looks like I'm in the woods. And so that's... Never want to be in the woods, really. We're going to shuffle up. Then we'll read some... Uh, shuffle this. And we'll read the setup. This is a nice short little campaign. It's three games. 
And I'm really looking forward to starting Dunwich on my the week that I get back. So the Friday after I start, I think I will be playing Dunwich. There may be a slight change. Um, I may have a guest on, so we'll see. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of interested what pe- who people think that I should play. I have the, the course that I've done, which, and then I bought Nathaniel Cho and Harvey Walters, I think are the two. And so I think Nathaniel Cho looks pretty interesting, but I'm also curious if anyone has any suggestions. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see what, see what we're doing. Night of the Zealot campaign. We've got part three, the devourer below. So after a frantic nighttime search throughout Arkham, you have tracked down and questions the above are several members of the cult. You are finding your findings are disturbing. They claim to worship a being known as Um Dardoff. Let's see how many times I can't say that. <laughs> um, a monstrous entity from another realm. You are able to confirm much Alita's story. The cult is agitated over the destruction of the ghoul lair. However, a surprising detail also turns up. The one who invaded the lair and, se- and set this night's events mo- in motions was none other than Lita Chandler herself. <gasps> Ooh, that's plot twist. Did not see that coming. Uh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't burn down my house. Um, you are not sure why this is important detail was omitted from Lita's story. Uh, she, did she <laughs> did she only tell you as much as was necessary to draw you into her conflict? But another night, she seems to be fighting to protect the city of Arkham from a terrible menace. The final piece of the puzzle was found written in a journal possessed by one of the cultists. It describes a dark ritual to be performed deep within the woods south of Arkham this very night. According to the journal... The uh, ritual's completion will open a gate and bring forth the cult dark master into this world. If the cult is not stopped, Lita warms, there is possibility that Um Darhoth's vengeance will consume all in its path. Frightened but determined to stop the ritual, you head into the woods. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so set up. So we gather the cards and we put the, uh, the modular encounter sets, shuffle them into the deck. Put the main path location into play, which is right here. We're starting there. And then we shuffle the six versions of Arkham Woods and choose four of them. Set the other two out of play. Let's go ahead and just do that. Spread these guys out. Really need a bigger table. I go like this. Yeah, it works. That looks better. Very cool. Alrighty. And then uh, set the ritual site and um, Um Dorhoff cards outside out of play, which they are. Um, randomly choose one of the four encounter sets. Um, and without looking at the chosen encounter, shuffle it into the deck. And the remainder of the encounters together. So, not quite sure. I like I don't know which one's which, and so we're just gonna do this. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll re-roll. One, we'll shuffle these guys in, which I like this. I think this is pretty cool because you don't really know what you're going up against. I assume they all play a little bit differently, which leads to replayability of this entire kind of core set campaign, which is pretty cool. Um, I Also, like, you know, there are branching paths throughout the entire thing, and I'm sure that only gets better and more more as you uh, as, as you get into the later campaigns. But it just adds that level of modularity that I really like. So, okay. Shuffled that guy in there. Okay, so let's see. We've got, uh, check the number of names recorded in cultists you got away in your campaign box. So if there are three or four names, place two doom on agenda 1A. So 
starting up strong with two doom. Yeah. Um, add one of these tokens to the chaos bag. We don't want to draw this. This is very bad. We will try and avoid drawing that at all cost. And if it's past midnight, each player discards two random cards from his or her starting hand. It is past midnight, unfortunately. And then if the ghoul priest is still alive, shuffle it into the encounter deck. But nope, we took care of the ghoul priest a while ago. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and let's read the agendas. So the Arkham Woods. From interrogating members of the conspiracy within Arkham, you have learned that they are performing a rite of vengeance in response to their destruction of one of their master's lairs. You have entered the woods outside of Arkham to try and stop them. The woods are unnaturally cold and filled with the deathly silence. So that takes four to go ahead and progress. Then the act. Investigating the trail. So this needs three clues to progress. The evidence you've gathered has led to the woods south of Arkham where you believe a ritual to summon a being called Um, um or Doth. I don't know. I'm just going to say it different each time and we'll get there eventually. It's about to take place. Seeing, uh, stealing your resolve, you set forth deeper into the woods, hoping you find the site of the ritual. So three clues there. So I'm going to draw my starting hand of five. Okay, so we've got Leo de Luca. Really, really like that. Really like burglarly. Um, hard knocks. I think backstab and pickpocking are all really good. I think I may shuffle in pickpocking or pickpocketing and deal another one. So it's a perception. Okay, cool. And then I have to discard two cards at random from my hand. We've already talked about how we don't like discarding random cards. I guess right now there was no planning at all, so it's not as bad, but it's still bad. I'm starting with eight health, five sanity, because I do have one mental trauma, and then five resources. So starting at the top, one through five, got four. Eee, that's probably not a good sign. And one through four. Five, reroll, four. No, Leo. Well, that's a bummer. Leo gives me an extra action, so we really like getting him very early. Okay. So we start at the main path. Um, Hangman's Brook separates uptown from the woods south of Arkham. Passing over a small bridge, you follow the path deeper into the forest. So this has zero clues available on it. It's a shroud of two. The main path is connected to each other woods location, which you see depicted on the screen here. I can resign immediately. There's nothing you can do to stop them. You flee from the woods, leaving Arkham to its grisly fate. Not, not a horrible idea, but let's see if we can do anything before that. Okay, so... We're going to go straight to the investigator phase in the first round of the game. And so we don't need to start looking at bad cards just quite yet, but we are going to spend two resources to play a hard knocks. And so this is, I can spend a resource to get plus one fight combat or plus one evade. And let's, uh, let's figure out which one we want to go to. Let's, uh, let's go over here. So this is Arkham Woods, the Quiet Glade. So heal one damage or one horror limit once per turn. And okay, so and then this is cool. They don't have any clues there either. So didn't quite, maybe not pick the right spot, but that's supposed to be two. So played a card, um, moved for two, and then I guess for three, we are going to draw a card. Unexpected courage. Great. Okay. 
Sweet. Okay, so during the enemy phase, there are no enemies. Upkeep phase, don't really have anything to upkeep except for getting a money and drawing a card. Hey, there's Leo. Nice. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, so, but he's expensive. Okay, top of the round, the mythos phase. So place one doom on the agenda. So this is already one away from progressing through. We've got uh, advanced agenda. And so this is the, the stage that I was talking about earlier where I don't advance. This is where I check to see if I advance and I don't. So if I add something right now that would add a doom, I don't advance until next round. Uh, and then each investigator draws one card from the top of the encounter deck. Hopefully it's not too bad. It's a ghoul minion. Um, so it's a 2-2-2, two, 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 and he comes in and engaged with me right there, just like that. Okay, so now it's the investigator phase. Um, I'm going to... I want to try and evade this ghoul minion. So he has an evade value of two. I'm at four. I think I'm just going to go for it. Hopefully I get it. So. Plus one. Hey, look at that. So the ghoul minion is successfully evaded. He's here. So that's one action. I'm going to go two. Um, we'll just continue on clockwise. I think that probably makes sense. Three. Okay, so Arkham Woods. Uh, this location is investigated using your intellect. It's <laughs> instead of the skill indicated by the investigation attempt. And it's a shroud of two, which is not great because I only have a two intellect. But it does have a clue on it. So maybe we'll try and pick that up here in a second. Nice, plus one. Yeah, that's always a good feeling to, to draw that one. Um, okay, so at the end of the enemy phase, uh, he's exhausted. He's not doing anything. Then we've got, I need to also check to make sure that, to see if any of these are connected. I don't think they are yet. Um, so we'll refresh all the cards. Ghoul minion gets to stand up. Then we get some money. So we're at five. We'll draw a card. Ooh, burglary. Excellent. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Then Mythos. Oh, no, we're advancing. Throughout the woods, a shrieking cry echoes from somewhere deeper in the forest. A score of hideous voices answer the call. Um, inhuman as the bang hounds and yet articulate repeating a singular name it's it puts it here three times uh um dahoth um dahoth um dahoth here my cat um shuffle the encounter discard pile into the mods in into the encounter deck and discard cards from the top until a monster enemy is discarded spawn that enemy at the main path and place one doom on the enemy Okay, we don't have a discard pile, but ooh, geez, that's a that's a big monster. Oh my goodness, relentless dark young. So pray lowest. No, he's gonna pray on me, and forced at the end of the round, heal two damage from him. Oh my goodness, ooh, I feel like this is just one that we uh we run away from. Gross. I am not a fan of that. Okay, we've got Agenda 2A. The ritual begins. Uh, the chanting builds in intensity, echoing in the cold air of the night. The sparse clouds of the sky co coalesce above Arkham Woods, blotting out the faint light of the stars. Each enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Well... Hmm. 
I'm going to spend one action to get a resource. I'm going to spend six to play Leo. So that's my ally, and I get one extra action each turn. So now I, have, I still have three actions. Um, I'm going to try and get this clue. So I'm going to investigate using two, and I'm going to throw away an unexpected courage to make it four. So four to two, because I'm investing with my intellect. Uh, minus X number of monster enemies in play. So you got one monster enemy in play. So we do pass and we go ahead and grab that clue. Very cool. Okay. So that's two. So I have two more. And this dark young is not pretty. Hmm. I'm going to do three, get a resource, four, play burglary. So hopefully that helps me get a little bit more resources. And oof. Okay. Okay, so enemy phase, enemies with the hunter keyword, which he doesn't have the hunter keyword. So I guess he doesn't move. Prey just determines who he engages, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. all the chat. Um, but I think that's what that's saying. So... doesn't really change a lot going forward. So we'll go ahead and finish up the, the phase. So there's Lita, which is not the best. Oh, he is. He is a ghoul monster. Um, okay, so minus two, I still pass. Um, <laughs> I was looking at the first. This is first. This is humanoid monster ghoul. So, but, yep, thank you. Nice check. Because, um, yep, so I was two, or I was four to two minus two. So we're good. Once. Okay. So, drew a card, got my resource, everyone stood up. We'll go on. So this takes five to move on. So to start, we'll place one doom. We're not progressing. We'll draw a card. So grasping hands. So test my agility for each point I fail, I take one damage. So test my agility three. My agility is four. So let's see what we got. Minus one, we pass. Very nice. Alrighty, one second. I'm gonna go take my cat to my wife, and so that he can hang out with her. I will be right back. <laughs> he gets very needy. Alrighty, cool. So, cat's hanging out with the wife now. Um, the attack of Cat Thulu. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, if if we let him in here, he would be like right here, and my a video stopped. Uh oh, one second. Let me see if I can fix that. Huh.
weird. That was, that was weird. Something, something, something disconnected on the video. video. Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. Okay, okay cool. cool. So, we're, we're here, here so we're back, back to the investigator stage. And I think, I think it looks like, like we're just going to have to go, go into this dark, dark young, relentless dark, dark young, pass through, through hopefully, hopefully evade them, and then, and then hop over to like Arkham Woods. Woods. Um, um, oh, sorry. sorry. Thank you. Sorry. So the camera has a mic and I haven't, I need to just figure out how to turn off the mic in the camera. So whenever we reset the camera, I have to remember to mute it again. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is with my four actions, we're going to hop here. Relentless Dark Young is going to engage me. So we've got that. Um, I'm going to, that's one. I'm going to try and evade. So it's a four to a two. And sounded cool and spooky go. <laughs> nice. Um, oh no. Okay. So so minus five. If there's an ancient one enemy in play, reveal another token. There is not an ancient young enemy in play. So just minus five. Just. So fail that. So that was two. We're going to try and evade them again. For, oh my goodness, I drew the same one. E. That's three. Um, oh no. Oh no. I won't draw it three times in a row, right? Oh my goodness, I drew it a third time. It's not just those in here, right? Nope. Okay, well, that's how this night is going to go. Or this that's how today is going to go, apparently. <laughs> so, three minus fives in one turn. Gross. Okay, well. Okay, then. Classic. <laughs> right. Okay, so we'll move, <laughs> yeah. we'll move on to the enemy phase. So, Relentless Dark Young is going to hit me for two damage in one mental. I'm going to keep Leo around. I think I'd rather not put the damage on him, which would immediately kill him. And so we're just going to take it. And then we are going to go to upkeep. So we get a money, reset everything, draw a card. Hey, there's a pistol. Okay, sweet. You can, oh, you can split the damage. I didn't know that. That's cool. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my sanity and put one on Leo. One, oh wait. I'm gonna put the sanity on Leo and I'll just take the damage. That's cool. Like one, one on Leo and the rest on you. That's awesome. I, I appreciate that. I did not know that rule. Sweet. That makes that a lot. That makes allies a lot better. Sweet. Okay. So, so what I did there is I took the damage and I gave him the trauma or not the trauma, but the insanity stuff. And that's fine. Horror. That's it. Okay. So 
top of the round, we'll put the second one on here. We'll reveal the top card, which is a Wizard of the Order. Spawn at any empty location. Forced retaliate. Or it has retaliate. Force at the end of the Mythos phase. Place one Doom on the Wizard of the Order. Um, also, Relentless Dark Young is supposed to have a Doom on it from over here. Okay, so Wizard of the Order is hanging out over at the Arkham or the old house in Arkham Woods. Okay. Let's uh let's try this again. Let's try innovating. Shuffle it up real good this time. Oh, come on. Automatic fail. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's not the same, but it's still not great. Okay, so let's go four to two again. This is minus monsters. So one, two, the Wizard of the Order is not a monster. So we do successfully evade here. Jeez, okay. So that's two. We're going to come over here for three. And uh, Relentless Dark Young is going to be hanging out exhausted here. Ooh, the Tangled Thicket. So this location uses is investigated using my strength instead of the skill indicated. Um, and so it's the same for me. So it's got a Shroud of Two. And we've got one uh, clue there. Man, I really hope that there's another clue here. Or else that would be bad. Okay, so that is... Uh, one, two, three. I have one more action, and we are going to we're gonna we're gonna try and get the clue. So we've got three to a one or three to two. And I think that. Hmm. Trying to figure out if it's worth. Yeah. Okay. So. I'll spend one to make it four to two. Automatic failure. Man, I have. I guess this is like karma because I drew pretty well in the first two scenarios and it is really coming back to bite me in this scenario. So. That's fire. That's fair. Um. Alrighty, so at the end of the mythos phase, I was supposed to place one here. So, so we will be advancing this next turn. And yeah, I need to come back and replay this Night of the Zealot campaign. Maybe I'll do that on a Sunday stream where see if I can just do all three of them in one one playthrough because I feel like this one didn't go super well, which. To be fair, it's Arkham Horror. They're they're not they're not ever gonna go super super well, but I do want to play this one again now that I you know get the flow. I also want to try it without skids. I want to try someone else. So, who is a uh, who is everyone's favorite investigator in the base box? I'm just kind of curious if anyone has a a favorite. I think I liked Wendy. And I liked Wendy when I didn't know the evade rule. And now that I that you exhaust the enemy. So I learned that in my first my first stream. And Wendy has like a 900 evade or something. And so I think Wendy would be pretty fun um, to use. Uh, skids is rough with only base. Yeah, that that's kind of what I keep hearing. Um, and so I guess like what makes him rough? Like, is it just that... Like there are not um, just cards that you want to um, do. Wendy is great for solo. Okay, good. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll see if I can run through this campaign again with Wendy. Um, I tried Daisy. Daisy is not good for solo. I don't know if she's good multiplayer, but once an enemy engaged me, I just died. So. Um, but 
I'm thinking that he he probably isn't great with the base game just because of maybe the the rogue and guardian cards that you have access to. And I think of him as being kind of like a high money strategy. And maybe there just aren't like enough high money cards to go in. But so he can't pass test well with those stats and doesn't have the cards to use gain resources. Got it. That makes sense. So, yeah, so future expansions probably have cards that are like similar to burglary, right? Like where you can do something to get resources. That makes sense. Okay, so we are in the enemy phase. And so enemies, um, Relentless Dark Young is going to not do anything, but uh, during the upkeep phase, he will untap. Then we will get a resource, draw a card. It's another backstab. I may go back and try and kill this Dark Young. Um. Yep, and then start of the Mythos phase, we'll place one. So this is three, four, five, so we will progress on. Yeah. Eee. Losing quickly. Um, a dark presence approaches, and you are assaulted by invisible pressures that bring you to your knees. A terrible force threatens to invade your mind and soul. Your throat clenches and your eyes water at the sensation burns through you. In player order, each investigator must test intellect six. Eee. Uh, <laughs> each investigator who fails must search the collection for a random basic madness and add it to his or her hand. Wow. Well, that's definitely not going to happen. So that's two. Two to six. Let's see. We've got minus two. So zero to six. So I fail. And so uh, a random basic madness, when it says search the collection, is that just um, like the cards that I have set aside, like over my box? Or is, is the collection something else i think it's probably just over here yeah no like all your cards okay so these are all that's not a madness that's not a madness that's not a madness interesting well that's kind of cool I, I like that. I like how you like you're bringing in cards. Um, so we've got six from the top, five added to my hand. We have got psychosis. So revelation adds psychosis to your threat area. Force. After you take one or more horror, take one direct damage and two actions to discard psychosis. Cool. Not great. Okay. Now we've got Vengeance Awakes. The world begins to shift and change as the ritual nears its conclusion. As the air grows chilly and the entire forest is covered in a layer of rime, the trees bend unnaturally and their shadows lengthen into weird shapes. Forced, when this agenda advances, if the investigators are at Act 1, put your set-aside ritual site into play and spawn Um Dolhoth there. The investigators on Act 2 or 3, discard all enemies at the ritual site and spawn the set-aside Um Dolhoth there. Um, okay. Cool. And then this, these actually are connected here. I'm just going to swap that because those are connected. Okay. Well, uh, at the end of here, we're going to place one there. I really probably need to go kill that. Hmm. Hmm. He's just an annoying monster. He's just annoying. 
Okay, I'm going to... Remove Doom from enemies when the agenda advances. Cool. Okay. So this that's just that one. That's good to know. That that makes it so you don't just like completely die very, very quickly. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um Okay, so got some backstabs. I want to I was over here. The shroud of one. But I don't really want to go. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I can activate burglary to get some resources. If I can do resources, then, you know, I've got a couple of backstabs. Um, which could be nice. Hmm. Let's see if we can get that resource. All right, the, the clue. Um, I think probably still getting clues is a, a good call. What do we think? Should, should we go fight monsters or should we uh, should we try and gather some clues? Curious to what you all think. Because I am open to anything at this point. I really wanted some dynamite. I want or my explosive blast or whatever card is there. I really wanted that so I could take out this dark young. That'd be kind of fun. But because I do got, I do have a good amount of damage here. So, so I've got my pistol, got two backstabs. So I'm thinking. What may be best is coming down here, taking out the ghoul, and then with this one shroud, hitting burglary twice, once at this turn, once next turn, and then going in with a lot of resources. You don't really have any suggestions from the crowd, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to come down here for one. Ghoul minion is going to engage me. I am going to... So that's one. I'm going to... Uh, before I do that... Um, I'm going to get one resource. So one, two, engage. Three, I'm going to spend here to backstab for action efficiency. So I'm using my uh, agility. So if I pass, then I do a plus two damage. So I'm going four against two. There's some good ones in here, I know. Um, minus one, so I pass. Deal plus two damage, so the ghoul minion dies. So that was get one, two, three, and for four, I'm going to investigate using burglary. So a three to a one and minus one, so we pass, so we get three resources. Okay, lean into the strengths. Okay, so. During the enemy phase, nothing's happening. Um, upkeep, everyone gets unexhausted. Draw a card, there's a flashlight. And get a resource. Okay. We're fine on the hand size. Mythos, we're gonna add one here to the current agenda. So we're at two. We're going to resolve an encounter card. Ooh, Ravenous Ghoul. So, oh man, this is not great. 
So pray lowest remaining health. So that's going to be me. Um, it's a three, 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 and it deals one of each type of damage. So that's engaged with me. And we need to figure out how to deal with that. At the end of the round, and then the mythos phase, Wizard of the Order gets plus one. So we're up to three already. And I may just evade that. I may just try and evade that ghoul. Okay. Investigator phase. We're just going to try and evade the ghoul, I think. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got three. I'm going to spend one resource here to go uh, four, two is three evade. And so I just need not a minus two. And we've got a minus five. Great. I have drawn that <laughs> piece way more than anything else um, or any other any other one. So we will we'll do it one more time. We'll try and evade. So this is two. Shuffle it up real good. Two. Minus two, place one doom on the current enemy. Um, so I was at six, two is, or I was at five, two is three, minus two. So he does successfully evade here. And then one doom goes onto the ghoul. Okay, so that was two. I'm going to investigate here. Oh, it's a three to a one. So we're just going to risk it. That three to one, we're going to use burglary. Minus four. Man, that deck is not great. Um, got one more action. And I think I am going to what we call... Uh, just keep Lita close and you'll be fine. She's very close, so. <laughs> um. I think I want to get away from this ravenous ghoul. Got one action left. I'm trying to figure out if I want to go to the main path to try and get over here to Arkham Woods, or if I go up to here and just kind of assume that, I mean, with two, three, four, five, I mean, I'm, I'm advancing next round. So maybe just come up here and hopefully that doesn't just kill me. Okay. So we'll reset everybody draw a card hey evidence and get a resource I need to remember about that and cool so at the top of the round place one doom on the agenda so this is two four five so we're advancing The investigators are in Act 1, which we are. I don't think you're supposed to be, but we are. <laughs> That's where we're at. Um, uh, put the set-aside ritual site into play and spawn Ungalaf there. So ritual site gets set aside. Or set. We're going to go here. I need a bigger table. This scenario is, I think, thank you for that. That it, it makes me feel slightly better. So, um, I'm, ha I'm happy to hear that. Um, and then this guy, oh, geez, he's a hunter, he's a massive, he's an ancient one, he's a five, six, six, gets plus four health for every investigator. So, he has, he's a five, ten, six, 
And at the end of each investigator's turn, you ready them. Oh, geez. If I control Lita Chandler, it's only after her. You throw Lita. <laughs> That's so horrible. <laughs> you can sacrifice Lita uh, to spare your own lives. That is awful, but hilarious. Um, that's <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> it's like, I kind of like it, though. Um, <laughs> okay, yep. So <laughs> he's hanging out here. Oh, man, that's hilarious. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Here you go. Sorry. There's 10 damage. I I don't there's definitely not a way that I can do 10 damage, right? Like here is plus two fight, and if I succeed by two or more, which I would need a seven, and I'm swinging at a five. So that that's not gonna happen. Um and if I did that, then it'd be plus one damage. So that'd be two every single time. And then if I backstab, he's so strong. Jeez. So if I backstab, it would be, you know, three damage. I, I'm i sorry, Lita, but you made me burden down my house. So I think it's time that I uh, I toss you. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay, well, <laughs> payback. Exactly. <laughs> Teach her to burn down my house. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, on my turn, I want to get over here and evade here. Um, I'm going to have Leo take the attack. And so, hey, quick, quick, quick rules question. So he's doing three damage and three, uh, um, sanity. Um, I always forget the word. Can Leo, if Leo steps in to take it? Does does it have like overkill? Does it hit me for whatever Leo doesn't take, or is it just kind of you know he takes the brunt of it and he's just over he's just dead type thing? I don't think it really matters, but it may matter in a future scenario, and so kind of curious. Um, okay, so we're gonna go one, two, evade. Let me go up to the ritual site, just confront them. So one, two, three. Okay. Only give Leo damage up to his max value. Okay, that sounds good. So Hmm. Okay. So I guess in that case, we're going to discard Leo to put Lita into play. So that's one. We're going to come here for two. The massive dark young is going to engage me. And then I'm going to try and evade the massive dark young. I'm going to spend a resource. So I'm at five to his two. And we've got automatic failure. Hmm. Bummer. I think I lose. Oh, wait, no, Lita has more. But I can't give her this. Uh, no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay. So, so enemy phase. So this big boy comes over and hits, comes to me. And then we're going to get attacked. So Relentless Dark Young is going to do two. And then we're going to put one on Lita. Then this guy is going to do three. Lita's probably not going to make it much longer, so we'll put two on her and one on me. <laughs> um, 
then three sanity. So we'll go one, two, three. So there's that. So at the end of the round, we'll get some money with the draw. Hey, cancel an attack. And uh, when I take one or more horror, I take one direct damage. So, nope, I only took horror one time. So down to two and two. And... Forgot to put that into play. The devourer below is now the active uh, agenda. So, um, if it's defeated, then we read resolution two. If it's not, then we read revolution three, which we're probably going to do, or we could just resign. No, we're going to toss Lita. Okay, so at the start of my turn, we are going to. I mean, there's no, there's no reason to try and hit anybody so Lita I assume that this doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity like this action there's like attacks evades resigns don't but this isn't any of those is it, I guess maybe it's a re resignation action um but so we're going to toss Lita. Sorry about your luck. Not sure about that. Um, sorry, you got any, any idea? And I assume in order to take this action, I have to be engaged with it. Like I can't just like toss her from like way over from the tangled ticket all the way over to the ritual site type thing. Um, I'm excited to run this back again. I, I think it'll be interesting. I am, I'm starting done, which, and so I, I, I want to get through some of that, but maybe we'll do like a, a Sunday like marathon stream where we just kind of knock this out because there's only three scenarios and really it's not that long. Um, probably, I don't know, two, three, four hours like on stream doing it all. So that'll be fun. Um, don't know, but just toss her. It's fine. Okay. Well, she's tossed. It'll be fine. Let's read resolution three. And hopefully I don't have to read resolution three next time. And also, I'm probably not going to burn down my house next time. Okay, uh, resolution three. In the face of this horror, you don't believe that there's anything you can do to stop it, but you have, but you have one hope if you are to survive. You turn on leader and throw her at the terrible monstrosity, watching in dread. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> it's, I can't stop laughing. Swirling, void-like mass consumes her. She cries out in torment as the life is sucked from her body. Umdahoth, umdahoth. The cultist chants. Lita Chandler vanishes without a trace. For a moment, you fear that the creature will now turn on you. But you hear one of the cultists say, Um, the hot is just a god who claims only the guilty and dead. Go and you shall be spared. The swirling mess vanishes and warmth and light return to the woods. The cultists slink away, leaving you alive. Lita's last moments are forever etched upon your memory. In your campaign log, record that the investigator sacrificed Lita to Um, the hot. Each investigator suffers two physical trauma and two mental trauma, as it was a mere sight of Um Dalhat to take in his toll on his, his or her body or mind. Um, the guilt over sacrificing Lita haunts you uh, from your memory. Each investigator must search the collection for a random madness weakness and add it to his or her deck. Each investigator earns experience equal to victory X value, which is zero. And the investigators have survived, but their actions weigh heavily on their consequence conscience. Um, I guess like that's the end of the campaign. So what's the point of adding all of that? Would you like take this character into another campaign? Is that kind of what it's saying? Um, at the end of the campaign, the experience trauma and weaknesses granted by the final scenario. Oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> um, 
Well, this is technically a win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I didn't die. Um, you could, but it's not really recommended. Yeah, no, definitely not. I, I think that they're, like, one of my favorite things about, like, LCGs or just games in general is trying out all the different um, investigators or heroes or whatever and just getting the variety. And so I don't necessarily know if I'd want to take the same one into another campaign. I'd, I'd much rather try something new. Um, so now that I've completed the introductory campaign, uh, try playing the campaign again with new investigators or at a higher difficulty level. So we'll definitely do new investigators. We'll do that at some point. Um, and then we've got, um, next week I'm off, I'm, I'm taking a break. So break for the holidays. And then the following week we'll start back up. We've got the second, um, I think it's on the third, January 3rd, we've got Lord of the Rings, on um the fifth we'll do um the next we'll we'll take on thanos uh jason and i will take on thanos and then friday we will start the done witch hey hippie crap the balance of the game isn't really built to handle an investigator starting with a bunch of xp right from scratch um yeah that's fair that's fair um and yep so we'll we'll start over we'll start a new one um I'm probably going to ask in the discord. So if you're, if you're not part of the discord, please join the discord. We're having a lot of fun over there, but we'll, we'll figure out what investigator I want to take through Dunwich. So that'll be exciting. I, I bought it right before they announced kind of the revised version of it. And so we're going old school on that one and we'll see what we got, but looking forward to starting it. Thank you all for hanging out with me um, early on, on Friday. Uh, really appreciate it. Hope everyone has a safe weekend, a wonderful holiday weekend. And I hope that um, everyone has uh, signed me up for Ashcan Pete. And so is Ashcan Pete out of Dunwich? Is he one of the ones that come um, in that box? Happy holidays, Astari. Good to have you. Um, thanks for <laughs> Merry Christmas. Um, it's crazy as Christmas Eve. It, it like it snuck up on us this year. Um, yep, he's the survivor. Okay, so we got to vote for Ashcan Pete. We'll see. We'll see how he wins out. Excellent. Um, well, I've got I've got a run. I really appreciate it. Talk to you all. I'll be active on the Discord. I'll be active on socials. So um, let's talk about some LCGs. But I will see you all in a little bit over a week. Have a great holiday season and have a great weekend. Peace.